I'm your host, Felipe Rose, and welcome to the Disco Chronicles and Beyond. This podcast is about the disco era, the music, the culture, and the impact it's had on the world today, and why disco is still so hot. After successfully touring the world for over four decades as one of the original co-founders and members of the world-famous Village People, selling over 100 million records, this disco king truly knows a thing or two about the disco era. So sit back and relax and enjoy my conversation with my guest today. The former Miss New York State's horizons are definitely expanding. Here's Linda Clifford. Let's welcome the very lovely and very talented Miss Linda Clifford. The lovely, talented Miss Linda Clifford. This next young woman started her singing career at the age of seven. In addition, she has won several beauty contests, including Miss New York State. But it was disco that brought her to everybody's attention. And she's going to sing her big hit for you right now. Uh, The hit, of course, is called If My Friends Could See Me Now. Here's the beautiful recording star, Linda Clifford. This is Philippe Rose. Thank you for tuning in, everyone around the world and here in the United States. Welcome to the Disco Chronicles, featuring today with none other than one of the most beloved, my friend and colleague, one of the most beloved American singers in disco, in soul, in jazz. If she tells me that she does country, I'm going to fall out, okay? (laughs) I'm going to just simply say that Linda Clifford, known for such songs as Runaway Love, my, If My Friends Can See Me Now, Bridge Over Troubled Water, Red Light, your collaboration, The Right Combination with Curtis Mayfield, and was a former Miss New York. Linda, welcome to the show. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. You, Thanks this for is- having me. Thank you. This is an honor. So I've got a bunch of questions here because actually in in researching, you were a model, a former Miss New York State. Yes. Actress in roles like uh, the Boston Strangler with Tony Curtis and Henry Fonda. Yeah. Coogan's, Coogan's Bluff with Clint Eastwood. Sweet Charity with Shirley MacLaine. Why were you unsatisfied? Because suddenly we, we saw you in these movies and then we didn't see, were you unsatisfied with the roles or the what you were getting? You know, I'll tell you, I, you know, I'm, I'm very grateful that I had that opportunity, but you know, when you're young, you expect everything was really fast. You want things to, to move, right? Yes, like me, yeah. Okay, so here's me. <laughs> You know, I'm 17, 18 years old, and I'm working on these films, and I'm like, okay, I don't have all day to sit on this bus and eat donuts. <laughs> hey, you know, my scene is coming up, let's film it. And, you know, I, I was so impatient with the amount of time that it would take to set up the camera, set up the scene, do the, and I thought, acting is not really what I want to do. I mean, I, I, I've always wanted to sing. You know, I, I did uh, I, four films, you know, to get the experience and, and to meet uh, with these people that you mentioned. And I had a wonderful time, but I realized that, yeah, this is, you know, it's a great industry, but it's not making my heart sing. You know, when you know what you're supposed to, supposed to do. But you have your calling like, card. You get that calling card and that passion kicks in. 
Exactly. You, you know, this is what this I'm going to do. Right. And this was not working for me. So I decided, no, I'm going to sing. That's what I know how to do. And that's what I'm going to do. What is your favorite genre of music? Because now I don't want to pigeonhole you because this is what I love about you. You have a wide range of taste in music. I love jazz. And I was very fortunate in uh, growing up. You know, my parents always had music playing. I listened to everything. I right. listened to uh, opera, jazz, R&B, pop. I listened to all of it. And I think there's something to be learned from every genre, you know, and maybe things that you can change and put from one genre into another. So, and, and I just love it. I, it it does something to me. It makes me feel good. And that's what music, I think, is supposed to do. Your studio albums, they're ex extensive. Out of your eight studio albums, okay, which one is uh -oh. your favorite and why? Oh, boy. That's really a, a hard question because, you know, they were very different. The album. Every one of them, yeah. Every single one was different, and there was something there was something special on each one. Something that um, was incredible. I I think I might have to say I love love loved the uh, uh, Isaac Hayes album. I thought you were gonna say uh, the the album with uh, Curtis, the late Curtis Mayfield. I love that album too, but. Uh, Isaac wrote and produced Shoot Your Best Shot album for That's me. That's right. And the time is so hard to resist. To me, it's just amazing. Like how an eagle trip. Shoot your best shot. If you want me, if you need me, just to have it. And you want to love me. Shoot your best shot. And we had such a blast in the studio. I mean, every day we go in the studio, we laughed and we got so much accomplished at the same time. It was just a joyful experience. I love that album. Are you the type of vocalist that after you record something, you want to hear it back so that you maybe, maybe you might want to sing it again? The short answer is yes. In the studio. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I'll go in and I'll sing it. I'll sing it through. I'll stop. Maybe we... I, I think maybe after two hours, then I want to go and, and listen back. Because, you know, you know, as you start to uh, record, you know, you, little things come that didn't start out that way. And all of right. a sudden, you find something a little more spectacular. So I like to listen to the later takes and, and see what's going on, because that where the, the glory is. <laughs> right, and then you also, at times, when you go back to a song after you've recorded it hours later and you want to sing it again, you find yet another nuance. Exactly. That yeah. changes the attitude now how you're going to sing it through. Right. And that happens to you a lot because on the Absolutely. Isaac Hayes album and also on the album with Curtis Mayfield, in some songs, you sounded like someone else, but then the way you ended it comes back to Linda Clifford again. There was a nuance that was happening there that in some of the songs through the middle of it that just, if we, I like my, I like sometimes closing my eyes when I'm listening to music, especially yes. female singers like yourself. And I like listening to the way the voice changes and flows through the music. And then I catch different attitudes in either the chorus or the verse. And you mm -hmm. do that a lot. You're not consistent. You, you, you flow with your track, with your notes and your music, which I love. And, and I also want people to really listen, you know, because that will get their attention and they go, well, wait a minute, let's go back. And then they, they really listen and they hear something else that's a little different. They go, oh, play that again, you know? So it, it really makes a difference. It, for instance, um, the, there's a song on the album uh, that Isaac did called, I Want to Get Away With You. I want to get away with you. There's so many good things we can do.
great, great song. And that, what you were saying reminded me of that song because I know I sounded a little different, a little bit more, more jazzy, maybe different sound to my voice, tonal quality, and then back to me again. I mean, just, but yeah. going with the flow. Ever. How did you discover Nancy Wilson? Oh my gosh. I discovered Nancy, I think in the 60s. And, you know, I did a tribute show. I and, want to talk about that. And I did, uh, you know, a lot of the early Nancy songs in the show. And um, How Glad I Am. And Guess Who I Saw Today. I guess mean, Who I are, Saw Today, which I love. Oh, my God. Those songs are my favorites by her. And um, so, you know, I found her. A friend of mine was playing this music. And I said, who? Who is that? And it turned out to be Nancy. I said, I have to have her. I have to have her. And I went out immediately and, and bought everything I could find. By her. Right. So, now you've done you've done the the tribute show, but you've done yeah. it with like full orchestra. Yes. Yeah. 2015, you collaborated with a house and legendary diva uh, vocalist Martha Wash and Evelyn yeah. Champagne King. Oh. together. Martha and I have known each other for, I don't even want to tell you how many years. Well, almost as long as I've known you. From the very beginning of the whole disco thing happening. Um, and we actually met in Venice, Italy, performing for, um, there was a show that they used to do once a year and it was huge. And what they would have uh, they would pull one artist from each country oh, to perform. Yeah. And so um, it turns out that year they pulled me, they pulled Sylvester. And Martha was still with Sylvester. Oh, so, like Sylvester. Oh, my yeah, God. Yeah. So Wonderful. that's what we met. And, um, and then later, I guess we would just bump into each other on the road. I wrote a couple of songs for, for Martha for her uh, gospel album. I wrote for her a song called You Lift Me Up. Yeah, I heard, I heard that, I heard her sing yeah, that. So yeah, so I wrote that one for her. And uh, her manager, you know, had said, I'm trying to get this thing put together. I'd like to get all these divas of disco together to do this, you know, to put on this huge show. And would you be interested? So from there, it became, we did this event in Palm Springs. And I think he had, oh my God, maybe 20, 25 divas. Wow, um, that's a lot. It, it was unbelievable. He had Sheik. He had Jeannie Tracy. Of course, Martha, myself, Evelyn, um, uh, Maxine Nightingale. Wow, uh, Maxine. You name it, they were on the show. And yeah. We had dancers. It was phenomenal. It was great. What did it feel like when you first heard yourself on the radio? Oh my, it was the most amazing feeling. And I remember it like it was yesterday. I was on the road. We were doing like promotional tour, going around the country, trying to get people to play our music and to be familiar with music. And the radio was on. And all of a sudden this music started and I said, gee, that sounds really familiar. <laughs> and then of course my voice comes over and I go, oh my God, that's me. It's amazing. It's the greatest feeling. So other than Nancy Wilson, who were some of your other favorite singers growing oh my, up? Uh, Nina Simone. I love Wonder Nina Simone. Oh, Ella Fitzgerald. Oh my goodness. Wow. You know, I loved Ella. I love swing. You know, that whole, you know, um, that old black magic has me in its bed. 
Ladies and gentlemen, we're, we're speaking with none other than the incomparable Linda Clifford. <laughs> what message would you like to leave your LGBTQ fans around the world? I think that the one thing I would say to them is how much I love them. And I think that they know that because oh, they do. My, my heart is always open for them. My home is open for them. Um, you know, I've, it's been a lifetime of- A relationship. It, absolutely. I mean, even the younger uh, uh, people who are coming up now and starting to listen to, they're like my children. I like, you know, they're my babies. I love them. Oh, and that's sweet. It's so important to, you know, to reinforce everything that they're feeling. You know, a lot of people have were afraid for such a long time. And th I know things have changed over the last 20 years or so. But, you know, I was there and I remember what so many people went through to try to keep who they were covered and away from family and away from friends for fear. For fear, yes. Yes. And, and you know, I, I hate the fact that they couldn't live to be who they were. That's not right. It's just not right. And, um, you know, I'm open. You know, send me a note on Facebook. We can talk. Yeah, and, and, and so for that and for my love to you and for you and Mr. Coronato, you have such a beautiful family. Ladies yeah. and gentlemen, she ended up marrying her drummer. I did, John. He's, he's pretty, he still looks pretty hot. He's a pretty man, okay. <laughs> so the, the two of you are beautiful. <laughs> you know, and when you post, you did with like, because... All of last year, you were posting, you know, pictures of your life and memories, and you put up uh, several pictures of your wedding, and I could not believe how beautiful the two of you were. Oh. And you still are, but back then, the wedding and the dress, and like, it was just like right out of a TV movie. Oh, thank you. And this November will be 43 years we've been married. Jesus Christ. And you yes. and you made it you made it through the, the pandemic. And we made it through the <laughs> pandemic. And that was the biggest hurdle we ever had. <laughs> so then so then that's it. There's nowhere to go from there. You might as well that's stay it. together. That's right. Now your daughter, she's so beautiful, and you have hey. such a beautiful family. Is there anyone else in your family that's musical like you? Well, um, let's see. My daughter sings, and she does a lot of work for Disney. She's out in California. Okay. So, um, you know, uh, she's done some of uh, Disney's TV shows, and, and then as time went on, she did a lot of voice work for some of the princesses and that kind of thing. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and for, her, for, her, for, for our fans, what is, what is her name? Her name is Gina Coconado. Gina Coconado, yeah, yeah. Yes. Uh, my son plays bass, but he's actually an archaeologist, so yeah. yeah okay, so, I like that. He's Something to fall back on. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, applause, applause, applause for the incomparable Linda Clifford. I am so looking forward to seeing you on the road. I'm so looking forward. I'm gonna, now that you pop that into my head about a collaboration. I am going to now start thinking about that more. I'm going to send you, I need to get your email address. So I'll get it from Ron, Ron Barcy. Yes. Do you know, I know Ron since like the 1970s. Really? Yeah. That's how far we go. Oh, yeah. Wow. He's an amazing guy. Amazing man. He's so sweet. I love him. I want to thank you again for being on the show, for closing our season one on the Disco Chronicles. Ladies oh. and gentlemen, where can we find you, Linda? Where can everyone find you? Well, of course you can find me on Facebook, uh, Linda Clifford on Facebook. And then of course my website, uh, you can find me at the, T-H-E, LindaClifford.com. 
and uh, you can go there and find out where I'll be performing. You can get all the information. You can find uh, loads of t-shirts and CDs and all sorts of good stuff. Too. That's fantastic. So I want to thank you. God bless you. I love you so much. You're one of these dear people that's constant in my life. So, thank you. Because God. when I think of you, and the, I think of you and I think of the happiness that we give each other and the joyful life. So thank you again. Have a thank beautiful, you. beautiful week and a beautiful month. Ladies you and too. gentlemen, thank you for tuning in to the last episode for season one of the Disco Chronicles. I am Felipe Rose. You can find us on the YouTube channel. This show will be moving, season two, will be moving to another platform. Thank you again. Thank, thank you, Linda. Thank you. Love you guys.